cling to or because my impression is they're already committed to re restoring uh, the I, I think there are a lot of a lot of uh, things swirling around and I think one of the reasons we're we're so uh, happy to have some people here who have been in the thick of this is that we'll we'll get some clarification and, and some answers about that Jay okay. <laughs> I have a um, a um, an agenda that Steve uh, Brown wrote up uh, with the order of the speakers. Maybe Victor Gonzalez, then Ernesto, then Sean Korshani, then Carl Stein. Could we do it that way? That sound good. If, if if I could just add a couple couple things to Jay's point, I, I think the point, and and a handful of us all work together pretty quickly to work on this, including Polly, who's been very, very helpful. Thank you. And the idea, Jay, is probably to figure out a lot of this. I think we're not exactly sure. We're hearing things in the news. I've seen various different uh, articles. I had a little conversation with Sean. So probably part of this process is to figure out what's true or not true, where the status is, where it's not. I think we've got the right people. We've got a handful of groups of people. We have um, Ernesto and Victor who are gonna introduce themselves. They, they live there and Ernesto is the president of Wise Towers. So I think he can give us a bit of a fact of where we're at. We've got Sean and Carl who will introduce themselves. I think it'd be nice to hear a little history. I've been very intrigued and, and we can understand a little bit of the background, but the goal today is to find out what's the status of the, of the, of the, of the Horaces. Um, I think it'd be nice to understand a little bit of history and then we can make a decision moving forward. And I think that's kind of where, that's the agenda that we put together. And, Sounds reasonable. Um, you know. Okay. And I'm putting the, uh, just, just to note, I'm putting the agenda in the chat uh, along with those, the suggested order. Did we miss somebody? Victor, Sean, Carl. Is that uh, well, the order one, you were suggesting? The one thing I was going to suggest is maybe Sean and I should exchange places because uh, I, I have uh, a few images from 1965 when uh, the playground first opened and it, Wonderful. Uh, I think it would serve to uh, sort of set the tone for what Sean probably has to say. Um, I also wanted to, you know, don't need to be on the agenda, but um, myself and Pierre Downing, we're from the NADNOC development. We're the lead developers for the project. Um, and we can give you a lot of, background on, I just want to say the horses are, have not been demolished. They were temporarily removed because of a life safety repair, um, which we can talk about in more detail, but I can happy to give, you know, um, more details on, you know, the, the, you know, which Carl will as well and Ernesto will be happy to support, um, you know, um, and answer any questions, you know, that anyone, anyone may have. So thank right, you. Thank Thanks you. for inviting me. Seems okay, like you have all the right well, people is what we can say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right, this is beautiful. You, and you, Michelle, but I just wanted to add a little bit of that as well. Thank um, you. That's perfect. All right, so let's have, let's start with the background. Um, Carl and, and, and John, whatever order. Carl. Please, Carl. So we're going to start with Victor? No, we're going to I thought you were going to start background. with the president, Ernesto, since he's the one that's from Wise Towers. To, okay. To <laughs> no, no, no. No problem. Polly, Polly, uh, excuse me, with all due respect, right? I'd like to hear what everyone else has to say. Since, okay. Since I have been the last that anyone has spoken to with okay. all these, these rumors swirling around. So I'll wait okay. and say what I have to say, you know, with respect to whatever people need to know. Well, Ernesto, yes. why, why don't you just introduce yourself to everybody? I know we've met, but why don't you, yes, you know, yes, yes, absolutely. My name is Ernesto Carrera. I am the Tenant Association President for hmm. the four buildings, the four towers at Wise Towers. Beautiful. Okay. And uh, I've been in these houses for 50 years. Wow. That's okay. Amazing. That's as long as I've been with my wife. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so so I just want to say, you know, I, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna reserve. I just want to introduce myself. I want to listen before I reserve judgment. But I will say this, Steve, and to everyone else, respectively, that uh, I have not been addressed with any of this of these things that's going on, and I take I'm a little affronted by it, but that's okay because I will say what I need to say at the, at the time, but right now I just want to listen. Okay. So I can let everyone know how I feel about it because I have not been addressed at all. 
I am the right. Tenant Association president. I'm in charge of a lot of people here. I advocate for a lot of people. And concerning these llamas, and they are llamas, fellas and mm -hmm. ladies. They're not, horses. not horses, but it's okay. But not one person has come to me to confirm anything that's going on. And I know, apart from PRC, what's going on. So whoever wants to talk, please be my okay. guest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm right here. All right. Okay, well, I think, Ernesto, what we're going to do is just not everyone knows that they're llamas and not anyone knows the background. So I think we just want to start with introducing the horses to everyone. But yes. I do think that you at the next stage should be you should update us on what you know, because I think we're very curious. But let's, I, okay. again, I think I some of that. us know know about it. And mm -hmm. It'd be a good starting point just to introduce it to everyone here. But um, we don't want to wait. We don't want you to wait to the end. That doesn't make sense. We, it doesn't okay. make sense for you to kind of give us a a status of what you know and where we're at, but let's let's introduce okay. them to people yes. for the first time because not everyone's familiar with them. Please, Steve. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ernesto. So I All think right. Carl, you're going to share your screen, or someone's going to. Uh, yes, if I could uh, have the uh, screen share, please. You already have it. Go right ahead. Oh. Um. Okay. Uh, All right. Hey, doggy, give him a treat. <laughs> he he gets um, very very upset um, if uh, something is <laughs> happen happening. Um, I lose the dog uh, before um, uh, or at, actually um, at, after six o'clock. <laughs> it's it's supposed to be his time. Uh. Um, so I wanted to start with just a brief introduction of Tino Nivola, Costantino Nivola. Uh, this was taken about eight years before uh, the Weiss Playground was done. It's, it's from 1955. Um, and um, uh, this is a maquette of one of the horses um, uh, before they were actually put into fabrication. It was. Uh, prepared for uh, presentation uh, to the, um, I guess it was the City Art Commission in those days. And this is a maquette of the model, uh, of the uh, fountain. Um, again, you can see that the base of the fountain is quite different from uh, the way it is now. And uh, the floor uh, surrounding the tetrahedrons had river stones, uh, black and white river stones in a uh, geometric pattern. Uh, when the playground was open, it was recognized at the time as being uh, an important uh, uh, bit of uh, outdoor space design in New York. And um, this again was, um, the way it looked uh, when it first opened. Uh, I'm just going to go through uh, a few of these slides um, to give you a, a sense of um, what it was like. Uh, there's really not much to say at this point, other than uh, quite obviously, um, it's um, it's had rather spotty maintenance over the years. I think this um, sort of, well, I, I think this answers the question of whether these are horses or uh, llamas, uh, maybe <laughs> not. Uh, I, I know Tino always referred to them as horses or occasionally ponies. That's a great nickname. That, that happens to be my nickname. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, obviously uh, th there's a connection here. Yes, it is. <laughs> Oh, nice. I raised my children on those llamas. <laughs> nice. Yeah. There are 18 of them? Uh, no, it's a little less. Uh, it's about, uh, I'd say, 10 maybe, Amy? Ten yeah. yeah. No, they're, they're 18. 18. They are 18. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Medication. Okay. I know that, wow, those pictures take me back a long way. It was a, um, a wonderful playground. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yep. Mm 
Wow. And interestingly, um, all, all of the, the pieces ended up as play equipment uh, in the way that uh, the sort of carefully controlled uh, play of today doesn't, uh, doesn't have. Uh, I, I think Tino was delighted. Um, oh, it was Tino, okay. Tino, uh, Costantino, um, with um, the way the children improvised um, with the, um, uh, the artwork. I mean, I, I think to add, I don't know, Carl, if everyone knows, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you are the son of the original architect, right? And uh, very passionate about it. Well, I, I, sh I should say, um, uh, I, I'm the, the son and former partner um, of the original architect. Richard uh, Stein, yeah, yeah. Richard Stein, yes. Uh, hi, Paul. It's, and it's, also a, a, an old um, colleague, friend, um, student of Peter Sampton's. Uh, hi. Sort of like old home <laughs> nice days. to see you, Paul. Right. And you too, Peter. Huh. Um, uh, th this gives you an idea of what the base of <laughs> Uh, what the base of the fountains originally looked like. And again, when the water was on, uh, there's just a thin film of water uh, on top of the stones uh, and uh, the eight spouts where it um, sort of trickled out from the, um, uh, the spouts on the tetrahedrons. <laughs> uh, this is the view in uh, from the south. Uh, here you can begin to see also that on the relief walls, uh, the concrete was really, um, I, I guess you could say polychromed. It was uh, two-toned uh, with the color coming from the sand that was used uh, to cast the concrete into. And here a detail of the, um, the south side. And uh, this is the opposite side uh, of that same wall. And it's essentially um, a positive and negative of the, uh, of the forms. Uh, for those who haven't been on uh, the site recently, uh, most of the concrete surfaces have been painted over. Uh, I suspect because the uh, walls were graffitied at some point and it was easier to, um, paint over the graffiti than to carefully remove it. Uh, a few details of the, the quality of the surface of the concrete. The comments by the dog. And um, the, uh, the fresco work, uh, the, the work that was done in fresh plaster. And finally, Tino's signature, Navola's signature from 1964, uh, and the, the drawing of the universal <laughs> figure. So that, that's really um, all um, that I, I have to say by way of background. The one thing I would say <laughs> is that um, uh, I've had, um, well, I should say uh, also that I'm here primarily actually as a board member of the Fondazione, <laughs> Fondazione Nivola uh, in Sardinia, uh, which is the, um, uh, the, the repository of most of uh, Nivola's work <laughs> at this point, and um, the, um, uh, the holder of the archives of, uh, of his work. Um, that um, I, I've had just some very, very brief conversations with uh, Amy and uh, uh, Alex Hart, uh, the architect uh, from uh, Minadnock. And um, uh, at, this, at this point, uh, it seems to me that um, uh, they're beginning, we're beginning together uh, a process of um, uh, finding out how to appropriately preserve uh, Tino's work and at the same time provide uh, all of the 
amenities, the, the um, newer amenities um, that are uh, appropriately um, de desired by the, the tenant body. Uh, I'm, I'm going to mute now uh, <laughs> in the hopes of saving all of your ears. All right. So, Sean, is there something to add to that from your perspective? Thank you. And thank you, Carl. I Thanks for having this meeting in the first place. I don't have a ton to say. I'm not going to speak forever. Uh, our background on this came up when Cooper Union began a show to celebrate Tino Nivola's work. And it's partly because it's been hiding in plain sight. There's a lot of pieces that are on uh, public schools. There's actually some in a courtyard at the Frank McCourt School that a lot of people are familiar with. And that has also, it's had minor alterations to it because of plaza repaving. And when we have pieces like this from the modern era, slight changes to things like paving patterns make a big deal. And I think it's so great that Carl's here because we have to see this in light of the buildings that it complements. And this works, it, it's not a playground or a playscape. It's a playscape that's adjunct and part of the ensemble with the buildings themselves. And this is part of the modern aesthetic where as architects were shorn of ornament, they were incorporating a lot more pieces from artists to complement the work and sort of as a stand-in. And as anybody's read the Times where the Upper West Side is losing uh, the Lippold sculpture, uh, para-architectural construction to LaGuardia, you know, this is indicative of multiple pieces of art on the Upper West Side that we're losing. We lost a Richard Sowers window at Congregation Habonim. The windows of First Church are moving to a museum in Virginia. And this is just a, a few of the pieces. And there's a richness in the Upper West Side. And we're, we've always been the creatives. We've been the poets. We've been the writers, the actors. And we're slowly shedding some of this art. So this is part of an ensemble of projects that we're looking to start to catalog and bring to bear. So things like <clears throat> the tar sculpture outside of Martin Luther King, just so we can document this and be aware of how these pieces fit with the architecture. And they're not just pieces that could be necessarily broken off or moved. They can perhaps be altered over time. And that's something uh, I just wanted to, to lay out. We're not against a playground. We're not against playground equipment for kids by any means. Uh, we're hoping there's a way to, to have uh, our cake and eat it too. And we understand that buildings and spaces need to change and evolve over time. So we're not saying nobody gets a bench, nobody gets a slide. Uh, I wanna be very clear on that. Uh, we just want to maybe work with the process to respect what was there. And hopefully because this has now gotten international attention, uh, maybe for the wrong reasons, now Nivel is becoming a household name, at least among us, which is great. Uh, and maybe there's an opportunity to, to bring back uh, some pieces. Uh, just to put this in context, Nivola has work besides across the city at all these other properties. Uh, they've got it at Saren and Dorms at Yale. Uh, they had it in Columbus, Indiana, which is essentially a, a petting zoo of mod modern architecture. Uh, so Nivola got around and he was with the right circles. He worked with the great architects of our time. And uh, this is part of a compliment to it. And you know, nothing's too late, nothing's reversible, irreversible. And these horses over the time, the plaza had been repaved, the horses got shorter. Um, at one point they had, uh, I, I don't know if it's a face lift or a face drop because they turned into llamas as Ernesto mentioned. And maybe there's an opportunity in, in all this to at least celebrate or bring them back. And I think in all of our research, one of the most fun things was realizing, and you can see it in those black and white photos, the polychrome uh, integral pigment of the concrete. And the fact that these were primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. And, you know, we're so used to seeing them as concrete and all the paint over the years, but you know, maybe there's an opportunity to bring this a little bit back to life and celebrate part of this because although we're in a generation of Purell and everything's sanitized and we have rubberized mats and nobody can get a boo-boo and every, nobody's feelings are ever hurt. Huh. You know, when I was a kid, we got scraped. We have scars. That's well, what makes us cool. Andy talking. Uh, and at the time, you know, Landmark Western History also fought for the adventure playgrounds. And there's a certain point of intuition that students or kids can have in just learning how to use space and interact with the urban environment that isn't so spoon fed to them. And that's partly what's so wonderful about these spaces for us uh, because it allows students, uh, kids, I keep saying students, I'm sorry, to explore and use the space. But uh, because there's so many distinct areas, it's it's not just for kids, uh, it's for you know parents. And because it's also so permeable, it's for other people from the community. So I will stop there and thank you guys for your time. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, Peter. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd like to say something too. Um, um, I knew uh, Richard Stein very well. He was a good friend and uh, of course, Carl as well. Um, uh, Richard was an outstanding architect um, that uh, sadly died prematurely. <clears throat> but um, the work um, of Nivola um, was really uh, quite outstanding some 50 years ago um, when I was in practice, although longer than that, but um, uh, I think we all enjoyed um, what he brought um, to architecture, which was a, a form of sculpture that was much larger in scale that was typical until that time. And um, I think preserving this work um, and bringing that area, that playground back uh, would be a, a wonderful thing to do. Um, and I thank Carl for sticking with this. And uh, it's, it's not often that an architect can work for so long on uh, with a client and with a situation like this um, particular playground area. All right, thank you. Um, Ernesto, you wanna jump in or you wanna uh, still, uh, still listen? I'd also like to hear from Amy, what she has to say. Ernesto, maybe you can sort of give us a status as you know it and, and you're muted, so you're gonna have to unmute yourself, but um, why don't you share what you know or what you see going on there? Um, we'd like to hear from somebody at the play, you know, at Wise Towers. Okay. Um, listen, I'm not here to argue about this or, you know, I'm listening to what people are saying is wonderful. What annoys me is that these llamas have now turned to, into part of the legacy of these houses. Okay, people have literally raised their children with these llamas. The peace in the times was totally irresponsible. To PRC's credit, I'm not defending anybody's actions, but these llamas could have been destroyed. I said to them from the beginning, please, whatever you do, treat these llamas with respect, take them down carefully so that we can decide at a later date what to do with them. Because I witnessed the, the, the water main break. It was crazy. Bricks were flying up in the air. People could have got hurt. They, it was a necessity for these things to be taken off. Now let's remember that these things have been up for over 60 years. Since the, since the inception of these houses. And no one ever came over here that I know of to come see the condition of the, of, of the llamas themselves. I never even saw a, a, a hose being put them to wipe, to, to wash them down. The only thing that took care of the, 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 that uh, preserved the cleanliness of the, of the llamas was rain and snow. Okay, the people of these houses love this art. You talk to any tenant in these houses, especially the original tenants that have been here from its inception. No one wants to see any of this art disappear. No one. Matter of fact, as far as we know, they used to call the artist Little Picasso. You know, we used to get a kick out of that because this this art is part of us. It's part of us. It really is. So to have people go to the times and irresponsibly say, oh, they're destroying the llamas or they're doing this or they're doing that without talking to the resident leaders. That's irresponsible. The times running with that story without coming to us to confirm is irresponsible. The only thing I can say is that I wish that it didn't take a construction problem
for people to now be so interested that now we're talking about conservation. Only now. But these, these llamas and this art, all this stuff has been wanting a, a redo for decades. And no one came. Now, I, as a resident leader, as the resident leader in these houses, I appreciate your guys being here. I have, I've had, you know, we've had the conversation with Carl. I'm very happy that he's here. <clears throat> we need help. And, and helping to conserve these llamas, to conserve the art. I don't know if it's smart to put them back in the same spot because you never know with the piping underneath the ground, if we have another break, then what do we do? Then we have to cut them again, take them out again, put them away again, then to put them back again. I don't know is something that we're gonna have to discuss. But I, I, I'm gonna tell you guys very honestly that I'm a little disappointed that it took something like this to bring back the attention to this art. I'm not here to blame anybody. I'm not here to, but as a resident leader and as a resident first, okay? Because there are a lot of people talking and spreading rumors and they wouldn't even sit in that plaza to enjoy it. Okay, and if anybody wants to dispute what I'm saying, please, with all due respect, feel free to say what you need to say. I know that, I, like I said, I've been here 50 years and I know, and I'm as passionate as any of my tenants about what's going on here. I'm not happy about a lot of things. Change is good and only time will tell. But I will tell you guys this, that a lot of the reporting, a lot of the innuendo, a lot of the rumors is very, very irresponsible because I witnessed the removal of the horses myself with my own eyes, okay? So no one has come ever come to me since this started to ask me not even one question about these llamas, not one. But here we are in the public forum discussing these llamas and not one person, not one leader has come to me to say, hey, what's going on at WISE? What's happening? And that is not fair. I'm annoyed about it. Like my, like, uh, my friend just said, you know, it's never too late. Okay. Okay. That's fine. It's 50 years. It's not, you know, not too late. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay. But let me tell you, we have passion for our art because while it's being said that it's part of the community, but in my opinion, it belongs to the wise community because we are the ones that have been overseeing these llamas and this art since its inception. Right. Okay, so I don't think it's fair that people should go around making things up, running to the media and saying things that they really don't know what they're talking about because I witnessed the removal of those llamas and those llamas are safe. Now, are they 100%? No, they need work. They need to be brought back to life. Yes, but they are there. They're not, they, they didn't, they didn't uh, 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 mess them up any more than they already was from the years of, 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 you know, is wearing down, but they are there. But for people to say, oh, they're doing this, they're doing that, without knowing and without asking the resident leaders, is not a good thing. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So that's what I'll say about that. Sorry if I took up too much time, but no, you know, that's great. Uh, and we th know. we thank you for your uh, for your sharing that with us and for all the work that you do there at Wise. Um, all right, I, I, Amy. Do you want to say a few things? Um, I also yeah. want to know that we have Michelle Bogart on the on the call. I don't know if she'd be willing to uh, to speak to this uh, or the larger issue. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, Amy. yeah. I would like to. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, thanks, Ernesto, Carl, everybody. Um, yeah. So, you know, just to give a little bit of background, we, you know, this project was started by, you know, part of as part of NYCHA's RAD program, which is basically. Can, can, can excuse, excuse me, just a second. Could you just introduce yourself? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm Context sorry. of everything. 
Hi, I'm Amy Stokes. Um, I am with a company called Monadnock Development um, and, and PRC. Um, we are the developers of the, um, the Wise Towers renovation. Um, and we sort of came into this project as part of, um, NYCHA has a program called RAD, um, which essentially, you know, just to, the, you know, the two second thing about RAD is basically, as we all know, NYCHA has been underfunded for decades the Wise Towers, um, the plaza, in addition to the buildings are in massive disrepair. Um, and there's a federal program that essentially converts public housing to section eight. And what we're able to do as private developers is take section eight subsidy, which is a more stable stream of subsidy and leverage it for um, go to a bank, leverage it for additional money um, in order to do comprehensive rehabilitation um, at Wise Towers. So when I say comprehensive, I mean very comprehensive. New kitchens and bathrooms, all new interiors. I mean, you know, new windows, exterior. I mean, really, you know, bring Wise Towers back to as close as we can to back to the original sort of state of these, you know, the original um, state of the buildings and improve the lives of the you know, there are almost 400 units at WISE. It's a large population and, you know, really improve the lives of um, the folks who live there. Um, Manadnock is an affordable housing developer. We own, you know, we do affordable housing all over the city. We've built over 10,000 units of affordable housing. Um, this is our, our mission is affordable housing. Um, you know, when we were doing resident engagement around, you know, at WISE, obviously the horses were, you know, you know came up many times. Um, and it was never our intention to destroy, never destroy the horses. Um, actually, we, you know, wanted to restore the horses. We had seen that they were vandalized pretty significantly um, and um, work them into the new plaza sort of landscape and design, um, which will also include gym equipment for, because um, as we all know, or maybe not know, WISE is a multi-generational community. There are lots of children there. There are lots of seniors. Um, you know, and um, what we want to do is incorporate new play equipment um, for, um, you know, for children of all levels. We're going to restore the, um, the basketball court. We're going to add a, another sort of play field. We're going to rehab the splash pad. And part of this plan is also to highlight the art. Um, you know, we are going to, you know, increase security as well and safety also in the plaza. That's also a critical part of our plan. Um, you know, we, um, is, we were planning on to, we've started some of the work at WISE in the interiors of the, the apartments. Um, and what happened was, unfortunately, there was a, a problem with the water main and we had to, it was an emergency situation. We need to remove the horses. Um, as Ernesto said, they are in the basement of, you know, in their secure facility at WISE. Um, we've hired a conservationist um, who is working to, you um, restore the horses um, to their original sort of glory, you know, um, restore the, the legs, restore the noses, um, you know, and we've been working in concert with um, Carl um, on, you know, creating a plan for how they can be incorporated back into the plaza um, in a way that, you know, um, keeps the spirit of, you know, of the artist and also incorporates the, you know, recreational activities that, you know, the Wise Towers residents really want. So we're still in the very beginning of that process. Um, and, you know, we're, you know, was, we were never, you know, unfortunately the emergency situation, situation I think led to some root, you know, kind of blew up and snowballed. Um, but I just want to make it clear, it was never our intention to in any way to, you know, remove, destroy the horses. And in fact, you know, we always wanted to, because we'd heard from Ernesto and the residents, how important they were to try to, actually bring them back to, you know, to, to fully restore them. And um, a lot of Carl's, Carl's been really helpful with giving us some, you know, context of how they looked and, you know, and giving us a lot more information so we can, um, you know, really um, do this in the, the best way possible. Great, thank you, Amy. Uh, we have a couple of uh, folks who I think would like to raise some questions. I also wanna welcome our council member, Helen Rosenthal, who's joined us uh, as well as members of the public who are uh, joined us since. Yeah, thank you, Helen. Um, uh, Paige and then Jay. 
Just very quickly, um, I live ar ar around the corner, as does Peter. And I remember as a child, um, I we didn't know it was who the artist was because Claremont Stables is across the street. And everyone thought that when these horses were there, that this was a nod. Sorry, Ernesto, they're llamas now, but they were originally <laughs> horses. Um, <laughs> And the issue was small children from Claremont, the riding instructors would bring the kids over and the kids would sit on them. And everybody thought it was Paul Novograd because nobody could pronounce the artist's name, thought it was his design. And he was the one who put them there. It, um, it's just funny how things get morphed, but there is a connection in terms of urban design the access way, unfortunately, Trinity changed their um, uh, their entrance, but that used to be absolutely on center with where the horses were. We used to call it the corral. And as a kid, it was great to go and ride a horse before you had to go home and do your homework. Um, a, a concrete one, because in those days, Claremont closed at 630 for kids. Um, so I just want to say this is I, I am so glad that this happened. And as a result of this, through our education program, because I wear a hat as a member of Landmark West as well, Sean called me to remind people that it was thanks to Roberta and her contacts and Polly and a host of others. Last summer, we did a program for the kids to celebrate, not knowing that there would ever be a water break, thinking that these things were there forever. And we got donations from um, a foundation to create clay kits for the kids and coloring books, et cetera. And um, Ben Kalos gave us the money for that. And he came and celebrated with a lot of the kids. Ernesto, I think we gave you a clay kit as well. You gave so, us um, kit. I gave them out to the children. Absolutely. That's right. And it was it was a great day. So it I just want to say there's um, it's not only architecture isn't just tactile and a box and windows and houses, but sculpture, um, a plaything, a memory, um, everything is here. And, and I'm just so happy that you guys have all sort of come on board to find the right thing. And also to Manad Nock, um, thank you very much, Amy. So I, I just need to say, if you need anything, we have archives at Landmark West, photographs of this. We'll do everything we can to help make sure that the reinstallation is, is accurate, particularly for the conservators. And Carl, but, Carl, thank you so much. You're great. That's it you, for me. But, you know what I'd like, uh, 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 Paige, if, if you can, right? I would love to put up some of those old pictures because I have old pictures in my community room. Okay. But I would love to have some of those pictures so I can put them up. No problem. So I have a community because, you know, the community has turned over so much with, you know, new generations coming mm -hmm. up, stuff like that. And a lot of people, what we're talking about right now, a lot of the younger folks that are raising their children have no idea. Right. You know, no. they say, and they listen to the old folks like me talk about it. But, you know, and I show them pictures, you know, of how things used to be and they still don't get it. So, you know, I'm trying to find as much, uh, uh, as many pictures as I can to post them in the community room and around so that people can see just what this community was like at its beginnings. I think what I'll do is um, I'll enlist um, Sean and we'll put together a package in the coming weeks. It may take us a while for, to collect everything. Hey, no, no, okay, I understand. All right. all right, just give me a little time. <laughs> no, absolutely, all you right. take Thank all you. the time you need. I would just like for it to, to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think That's a recommendation great. came up that some sort of interactive kiosk be set up so the okay. kids can see things the way they now see things electronically. Mm -hmm. But yeah, all right. So. Uh, now let's go to Jay and then uh, then Stephen. Yeah, I, I, I think it's very clear that there's unanimity as to the uh, value uh, of these sculptures and the fact that uh, they need to be uh, preserved and restored. And that sounds like from what Ms. Stokes uh, told us that that's the case. They've hired a Random. conservator 
to get them back into shape. And I, uh, it's clear that it sounds to me like the right things are being done and the plan, I don't know if there's a time frame, but the plan obviously is to restore uh, the sculptures to their rightful uh, location. And it sounds like they'll be in even better condition than they have been over the years. So uh, my question or, or my desire at this point is if can we pinpoint what it is that our committee and our board can do in terms of a statement or resolution. And, and in fact, what, what's needed, because it sounds to me like the process is in motion uh, to do what we all would want to be done, which is secure them, preserve them, improve them, and restore them uh, in the location at Wise. So hey, can we, I, I, I may, maybe the chairs or Stephen, maybe you can define what it is that we can do. Uh, is it a statement in support? Uh, do we need to add anything so that we can focus on what our function is at, at, at this right. juncture? What we can do to, to help and support the process. Uh, Stephen and then Cynthia. Oh, so I thought my question was um, was to that nature, and that is, Amy, could you clarify what is the status now, and what is the next steps, and what is the plan to the eventual restoration of of this? Yeah. So you know, we you know just recently brought on a conservator um, a little bit ahead of schedule because. Obviously, you know, we had to remove them a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, you know, we are planning to be done with WISE, the whole rehabilitation of the development, um, probably the beginning of next year. Um, I, you know, this is, I'll probably have to kind of follow up because honestly, I need to get a better timetable from the conservator. It might take some time, you know, to, we, as part of, we, our portfolio is quite large. We actually, um, so took over management and rehab of about 40 buildings that were formerly NYCHA. So we have a three year time frame. Um, so it's fine if it goes past, you know, if we kind of go into next year too. So we're sort of in the very beginning stages of figuring out sort of what that time frame will be for restoration. Um, but I'm happy to come back and give you a better, you know, idea probably in, a, in like a month or so. Um, because the, the conservator really has to kind of come in and she's obviously looked at the you know, the horses, but, you know, really has to get her team in there to kind of, you know, figure out, you know, kind of um, the, you know, figure, figure out the plan in a little bit more detail. Um, and, you know, from a planning perspective, you know, Carl, Ernesto, um, you know, the resident association, um, you know, we're all working on sort of a, and Alex, our landscape architect, are working on a revised um, sort of plan for the plaza. Um, so, you know, I would love for after, you know, that's going to take some time as well. I mean, we're really, you kind of cause it like sort of in the inception of a lot of this, which is exciting. Um, but you know, it's gonna, it's is isn't a, you know, um, it's going to sort of take some time to kind of flush out. So, you know, I think at some, maybe in a few months, we can kind of come back with our, you know, um, our sort of the plan that we had kind of collaborated and just, and agreed to. Um, in okay. you know, in Congress with Carl and the Resident Association, and and that is my next question. Is I know that Ernesto has, has gave a little bit of frustration at not being consulted or or talked to enough. Are, are you? I mean, are you? Do you regularly speak to Ernesto? Is that yes. part of the process? I want to make sure. Oh yeah. That. yeah. I, I I mean, Ernesto can. Speak I didn't know. I know Ernesto. I didn't know if he was frustrated <laughs> you as well. But yeah. I would clearly think that you know, that they have a stake in what happens. And I would hope that that, that they have an input directly on, on facilitating this. So, so yeah, so Rod basically is, so the Rod, whole Rod program is a resident first program. So I think one of the, you know, one of the things that sort of happened with the, you know, the sort of design and the, you know, kind of the plan was that, you know, we had consulted with the resident association many times, you know, that's how we sort of found out about the importance of the, the statues you know, kind of, you know, the intergenerational, you know, um, activities that were needed on the campus, you know, um, you know, this is a resident first approach. I mean, we are 
here for, you know, our, to, you know, um, help the, you know, improve the lives of the residents of Wise Towers. I mean, that is our mission. So, um, you know, we have talked to Ernesto, I probably think we talked to Ernesto, I don't know, Ernesto, like multiple times a week. Um, okay. And oh, have it's been a sure. very comprehensive. It's a, it's a genuine question. I don't yeah. know. I yeah. to, I, there's no, yeah. I just want to make sure of that. I yeah. think yeah. you want to facilitate things and I want to make sure that that yeah. Ernesto and, and everyone there feels like they have a say in what's going on now and moving forward. And that's- Yeah, that's and I, I mean, I guess I, I would also say that, you know, like we had, and, you know, we're, I'm very sensitive to the artwork, you know, but I'm also sensitive to the, um, the needs of the residents and their desire to have certain recreational spaces on the plaza, you know? Um, and I think Ernesto, you know, and I've said, you know, said a lot of really valid points um, and, you know, we, what we've heard from residents is that they, they haven't had a playground in a long time. They, you know, the splash pad, the basketball courts are in massive disrepair. Um, you know, there's no barbecue pits for families to gather. So we want to preserve the artwork, but also are really committed to creating um, spaces for the Wise Towers residents to really enjoy their, their community and their, and their, their, their home. So, you know, that's why I'm, you know, we have, a, there's a lot of goals for this project and the residents are sort of the, the first priority. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop it. To, I mean, maybe to speak to Jay's question is that, you know, there may be a conversation to have you come back in a month or something or, and let us know. I don't, I don't know if we'll know what we can facilitate, but we'll continue to have this conversation. But I think what we inevitably want to do is make sure that this comes back and it comes back in a way that Ernesto and Wise Towers is very happy with. And I think that's, that will cool. be our goal. And I'm not exactly sure how to facilitate that, but I think that would speak to what we want, what we'd like to accomplish in Community Board Seven. May I okay. may I say one more thing, please? Sure. Sure. Okay. Look, in closing, for myself, number one, the tenants of Wise are used to having promises made to them that basically are either changed or not kept. So my my first priority is I want people to listen first and foremost, because we are the ones that live here. Now, I respect the surrounding people in the community because they live here too. But until this happened, we were like the best kept secret. We, we, these four towers, we know we're surrounded by brownstones, high rises and all that. Okay, fine. We were left out in the lurch. The buildings got sold and change is upon us. Okay. But first and foremost, we need to be listened to. We need to stop having all this, like I said before, the innuendo, the, 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 the gossip and the storytelling people go into the press without talking to us, highly irresponsible. That cannot continue to happen because believe me, your guys' phones are not ringing from eight o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. And I'm, I, you know, I live with a woman. I have to, I have to keep my wife, you know, at bay because it's driving her crazy. You know what I mean? Like you guys are here now and I'm, I, all I do is hope, I'm always optimistic. Okay, I'm all, I'm always optimistic. That's how I am. But I don't I, I don't like BS. I don't, you know, I've been hearing stories about my my development for years and years, and okay, fine. But I want people to listen to us, to talk to us, so that we can be on the same page and be adult enough to agree to disagree. And if we can't do that, then we're not really a community. People are people just there 15 minutes and I'm sorry I, that's just how I feel I've been here a long time a long time and I've seen it all all right okay believe it. thank you um let's go to Cynthia hi Cynthia welcome hi as you know I am the TA president of the Brownstones and the Wise Development right. it's a part question while everyone is concerned. I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat that introduction? I didn't catch I'm the Kenneth Association president of Wasser Brownstones, Westside Urban Renewal Brownstones. We have 36 <clears throat> stones scattered around Wise Towers between 89th and 93rd. All right, but we are part of the Wise development. Um, Thank you. 
it's a two part question. While everyone is concerned about the llamas, there is an entire plaza that's currently under construction. What is happening with the rest of the artwork? What do they plan on doing with it? Removing it, restoring no. it, what? That so is, uh, I, it's a two part. So that's the first part. What do you plan on doing with the rest of the artwork? Mm -hmm. The second part is, as Ernesto said, it's, it's a sad day and it's also a wake up call that everyone now is so concerned as to what's happening at Wise Towers. When they were first selected for the PAT program, I implored the community board to get on board and speak to Ernesto on what was happening at Wise. Because no offense to PRC, the same way NYCHA lies, PRC doesn't always hold up to the work. So we've been watching and we've been supporting Ernesto since day one. And if it took the removal of the horses or llamas to bring all this attention, everybody needs to stay glued to what's happening. This is the first development that's gone private on the Upper West Side. So we're watching right. because there's no trust. That's right. Uh, defi definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, with the rest of the, the um, so there's, three, um, there's a fountain, two other statues and a mural. Um, everything's staying, so we're not demolishing any of the artwork. Um, the conservator needs to do a conditions assessment to basically figure out what the conditions of the other murals are, or the other statues are. Who's the um, conservator, Amy? It's, um, her name is Mary, um, uh, Mary Jabolinsky. <laughs> I'll write it into the chat. <laughs> Thank you. Mary um, Jablonski. 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 She's wonderful. Sorry. Great. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Don't tell that I pictured her name. Um, so, um, so, we, um, so we're going to do a conditions assessment. You know, as Carl mentioned, they've been painted over. You know, my understanding, and obviously Carl knows a lot more about this, is right, like not with the best paint, um, which might have damaged them even more. So, you know, we're in process of, you know, figuring out sort of what the condition and then cost of that, of the restoration would be. Um, you know, we've committed to the horse restoration. We're gonna have to see about the other other, other items, but nothing is being demolished in any way. Um, <clears throat> and we obviously want to, you know, bring, you know, the plaza is really important to us. It's a focal point of the community and the buildings and the residents of Wise Tower. So, um, you know, there's, you know, We'll also report back on that once that conditions assessment is done. Yeah, I mean, I, we both clarified when, when you come back, if you can, you know, speak to both of them, Cynthia's yeah. concern about the rest of the art as well as the horses or the llamas. I keep writing both of them, but we'll figure it out. Uh, Horse yeah. llamas, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, get a full Thank report you. on all of it. That would be great. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Great. Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth is uh, next with a question or, or statement. Thanks so much. Um, hi everyone. Um, I uh, my name is uh, Liz Waitakis, um, and uh, I, I wear two hats in this meeting. Um, during uh, the day, I am the executive director of a nonprofit organization called Docomomo US. Um, most people on this call have probably have never heard of our our funky little um, organization, but uh, we do historic preservation, um, but just of 20th century modernism. Um, we're an international organization. I do run uh, the chapter in the United States. Um, but uh, at night, I live in Harlem, um, and I am a community board member of CB9, um, just north of you all. So I know the Wise Towers. I know um, we also have quite a bit of public housing um, in CB9. Um, and so I, I just want to say I appreciate you all having this meeting. Um, I think uh, from my perspective, um, the uh, composition at the Wise Houses is um, so important. Um, and really that show at Cooper Union that happened, I mean, within weeks or, you know, of the pandemic and just really brought so much understanding to uh, Nivola and his work and how much of it that is here in New York City. Um, so when we saw, um, the horses removed. I don't. I we did not know that there was a water main break, and I'm I'm glad that's but that has been cleared up, um, and why they had been taking down. But they're they're not a landmark. 
Um, and so really preservation of, um, you know, fabric like that is, is up to all of us. Um, it's up to community boards, it's up to ownership, developers, and, and the community and the tenant. So I just wanted to just chime in and say, thank you for having this meeting. Thank you for everyone for caring, the developer, the, the tenants. Um, uh, we work quite often with Carl. Um, and I will just say from Dokomomo's perspective, um, and also Mary Jablonski, we know quite well. Um, I do believe that um, you are all in great hands um, with Carl and Mary. Um, and I, I just, the, the other thing that I would just say is uh, from, from our perspective, I think, you know, we are always trying to save our and architecture from this time period, um, but we want to save it for everyone, not for, you know, people at the higher income levels, which was one of the reasons why it was so important um, when we saw what was happening at WISE that, um, you know, I think we felt like we needed to, um, because we have a big voice um, to be able to say um, that this artwork was important. And it sounds like everyone is on the same page with that. And I think if anything, um, we will continue down this path. We've talking to someone about doing a survey um, of uh, art and public housing at, the, at this time period, um, which uh, will be interesting to, to take on a project like that. But um, I don't have any questions. I think everyone is, uh, again, on the same page. And um, I will hopefully pop in again um, when you all have another meeting. We just had our CB9 preservation meeting last night. So I'm used to this format. Well, if, if, I could, if I could quickly say something uh, following up on what Liz just said. The uh, provision of art uh, for everybody uh, was a key part of Novola's point of view. And one of the reasons um, that he uh, really pioneered the use of um, sand cast uh, concrete and carved concrete was to find a more affordable material than stone or bronze uh, to make art um, more accessible. So uh, just again, to reinforce what uh, Liz was saying about um, the importance of having art in publicly accessible places was, um, uh, it was intrinsic to the, uh, the very beginning of the Stephen Weiss playground. All right, any, uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and that's a super important point. Um, any other questions for the folks who've joined us? Um, well, I, I got one. Listen, I, I, I'm sorry, guys. I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I just would like, right? Like I said, like I spoke with Mr. Carl a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Stein, and I would love to have some of you guys, now that summertime is coming up, the pandemic thing is easing up a little bit. I would love to have some of you guys come to the site. And see the art up close, as opposed to looking at pictures and, and all this discussion, where we can look at it together and okay. see what the problem is and see how irresponsible NYCHA was at the beginning of just painting stuff over mm. and just saying to hell with it and leaving it alone. You know, because we could talk about this. We could come back here tomorrow and talk for two more hours about it, you know? But I would love for, for a couple of you people to come over and hang with us for, for a little bit, half hour, 45 minutes, and just look at the art for yourselves and see what time has done to this art, if it's possible. Ernesto, uh, first of all, uh, I, I'm happy to accept your invitation. Yes, yes. I would say that I, I've been on the site at least half a dozen times in the last three or four years. I, didn't know. I, I just didn't know to look you up to, to get the uh, true scoop on what's going That's on. Fair. That's fair. That's fair, uh, Mr. Carl. You know I, that. That's fair. That's fair. All uh, right. Uh, Robert's got a question or a statement. Okay, thank you, Kate. 
I just wanted to add a historical note that um, in the bunch of years that I, that I grew up in NYCHA, two of them, the what is now called the Martin Luther King, it was Stephen Foster in those days mm -hmm. at the 115th Street. Then yes. my grandmother lived at the JWJ mm -hmm. in the east side. And that's essentially where we grew up because we followed her. Yeah, I have family. The, uh -huh, so that the... The interior plazas of NYCHA uh, were traditionally, the, the, the traditional design included these concrete play toys, these toys, these, uh, now they're llamas. And in those days we had barrels and airplanes. Mm -hmm. But I remember, I seem to remember an elephant. Yes. So am I remembering <laughs> that in that correctly? I seem to remember an elephant. Yes. And uh, so we're talking about uh, eight, nine, 10, 11 years old. And, yeah. and, and, a, and a warm evening, as soon as the, the spring came in, the interior plazas would be jammed with families. Yes, absolutely. With yes. the families and their children, and we would run all over the place and uh, get, you know, be brutalized on these toys because, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and I, and, and I always took it as a challenge. And this is a little separate, but the monkey bars, and because I can never get on the monkey bars without being severely bruised. And I said, I'm going to get on here one of these days and I'm going to do my somersaults and tumbling <laughs> my, to my mother's horror. And I'm going to do it right. <laughs> but the thing is that these concrete and, the, and, and they were not just, the children didn't ignore them. We were so young, to us they were real. Yeah. So we really were on that airplane. <laughs> mm -hmm. So my point is that, Ernesto, that uh, the legacy of these, uh, these concrete structures is so important to the yeah. history. The Nietzsche yeah. history is such a beautiful history. Yes. And it's, you know, it's gone astray and, you know, we're trying to bring it back. And uh, yes. if it's going to be partly privatized, that's a reality that you really can't avoid. Development is development. It. You have to fight to hold on to the, as much as you can. And uh, you have right. to retain the, the aesthetic and the initial concept, which is for the high rise was these expansive plazas and these sitting areas that uh, since you're sending people 14 stories up, then you have to give them some place to be that's on the right. ground. Because you, yeah. you know, and that's the concept of public housing, okay? Yeah. And uh, so this is, um, this is an important, and a reminder because uh, Manatnak is good, but they're developers. Yeah. You know, they're developers who want to bring down the Tower of Pisa. Mm -hmm. You know, so look, if you're going to bring down the Tower of Pisa and, and uh, uh, what, what's a, what's a night to development, what does it mean to you? you know so what I mean? it really, it's really up to us and what this crew is doing with uh, Polly and with Cynthia and with Ernesto and all of these uh, public housing warriors to, and, and Madeline to, to retain mm -hmm. that legacy and that history, which is quite beautiful. Because the housing, when you get it fit as, ha as it's happening, is good housing. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, a, that's my two cents for the moment. Thank you Thank so you, much. Robert. Well put. Thank, Thank you. you. Beautiful. All right. Um, I, Roberta, you have uh, your hand up. And then um, I want to <laughs> kind of move towards wrapping this up. We know we, we need to, uh, we'll be working on a statement of support. Um, and then we'll uh, hope to follow all of this up. Uh, our next meeting is uh, May 13th. We'll try to, uh, to, to see if, that, if it makes sense to do a follow-up there. Um, also, I wanted to check with Council Member uh, Rosenthal if you have a, any parting words for us, um, but Roberta. I think this is very helpful. I, I think it's very important that, that we have, you know, that art projects that are, are, are good for the community stay in the community. I also think it's important that we continue to work with Ernesto and, and the other um, TA presidents to make sure that, that their homes, that, that um, Amy and your organization work with them to make sure their homes are, are what they need. It's, it's so important for communication. It's so important 
for for everybody in the complex to know who to talk to, to know that they're respected, to know to know that that their concerns are respected. And um, I, I think this is great. Um, I, I want to praise Landmark West for the wonderful work they did last summer when they had a, an outdoor project that they couldn't do because of the COVID-19 and they created these wonderful art kits. Um, but I just wanted to mention that I think ongoing, we've got to support them in other ways as well as just the, the artistic. All right. Thank you. Roberta, I'm a preacher, so I'll say amen to that. Um, Helen. I'm just so grateful for this conversation. Um, grateful that there's attention being paid to this wonderful artwork and history. Um, you know, as Ernesto knows, I actually tried to put city funds into each of these projects over the last six years uh, to the basketball court, to the um, spray area to the, um, the open play area and was thwarted at every turn. We put funds in for a toddler playground and NYCHA installed a playground for teens. And it was just mind boggling. Um, so you know, hats off to Amy Stokes and to the others in her um, organization. I, I'm rooting for them just like you are. I think I see Pierre here. <laughs> Downing, it's great to see you again. Um, you know, God bless you if you can get this done because I share, it's, it's been really disappointing with NYCHA. And uh, I, I mean, if this can really be done now, I'm, I'm grateful. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you Helen. Thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, everybody. Uh, if, uh, if that's it, and I sense it is for the moment. Um, uh, yeah, Victor, you have, uh, and, 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 and I see Dan. Okay, sure. Victor, you're muted. Do you have to unmute yourself? Yeah, and then we have to, we have two more things to talk about. Okay. Can you hear me? Ah, yes. Great. Oh, Oscar. So oh, Victor. As part, of, uh, as part of a resident here at WISE, our TA president, uh, Ernesto, who I've known for many, many years, is really on top of things. But what I want to talk about is, you know, I don't care what happened in the past. What I'm concerned with is the attention that's being paid for it, paid to it now. Because it may not be a landmark, but it's important to the residents what it means. We, we're talking about the horses. We also had a water fountain in that plaza. Mm -hmm. We had cubes that were actually the water would sprout out of these cubes and make a little uh, pool that kids used to wade in, okay? The sprinkler system, the, the whole kit and caboodle, it was an entire project that was geared to the families and the children that lived here. So the other good thing about this is that now, since Wise Towers, uh, to me anyway, is the jewel of the Upper West Side when you talk about public housing. People are gonna pay attention everywhere else. And Wise Towers is not the only place that has artwork uh, uh, that's, that's important to the families that live in these developments. Right. All over the five boroughs. And if this attention draws attention to all the other developments, so be it. And I'll be ha more than happy for it. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's something that, that is so important, so part of the, the, the family structures, so important to us that the residents themselves said to Ernesto, if I'm not mistaken, 
We want the llamas back. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And, and you know, they're not going anywhere. I, when I was first asked about this, I said, wait a minute. And then, of course, I spoke to Ernesto, and he brought me up to speed. Mm -hmm. Any, uh, Helen Rosato, as she stated, she did put, she invested money into the, the, this, this development. And again, it wasn't the results we were looking for. We waited and waited and waited and waited. And this attention that's being paid to it now is going to make things happen. PRT, I love you guys, but I need you guys to step up. You know, prove everybody wrong. Prove that you guys got the stuff that will make it happen. That's right. I tell them that all the time. This is what I, I really want from you guys. And Community Board 7, you guys, I love you guys. I we love you. Of, I spent a lot of time with you guys as well. Yeah. And I had to resign when I was offered a different post because it would have been a conflict of interest. But I didn't want to leave CB7. Too many people there that I love the company, Paige and, 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 and some of the other guys that I was dealing with, which I don't see anymore on the board. And so, you know, this is so important. And I'm sorry I'm long-winded, but I wanted to get that in before you end. I know it's been a while and I joined in late because I couldn't find the batteries to my hearing aid. <laughs> and by the time I, I said, oh my God, I got to get on this call. So thank you very much, Stephen Brown, for having to invite me. Uh, and Ernesto, of course, and, and, and Cynthia Tibbs always keep me up, up, up on things because I've been out of the loop for a while due to illness. But I'm trying to get back on that horse, and this is a great way to start. Thank you, C7, <laughs> and all the people involved in this call. All right. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> all right. Uh, we, uh, yeah, Jeff? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so I've been in the neighborhood for a long time and actually I was living across the street from where Weiss Towers is now, long before they built Weiss Towers. And I photographed it in the beam stage and I photographed it before they put the bricks on it. Oh, I know you. And Yeah, and that's the way we <laughs> met each other, that's right. Yes, so, yes. <laughs> okay, cool. That knows everybody. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, a friend of mine told me that uh, the horses had been uh, mutilated. So I immediately ran <laughs> over with my camera to take a look at what was happening. And it was pretty shocking. I contacted my friends over at Westside Reg and uh, came over and tried to do some research on this, which eventually was printed a couple of weeks ago. But one of the things which I found interesting was that the people in Sardinia were really upset. They were upset back around 1984 or so when, they, when the muzzles when, were knocked off by, uh, by vandals. Uh, and then they were really upset even more so now when they heard that uh, the, uh, the horses had been mutilated, which is uh, basically how they treat it, how they, they, they refer to it. They said, why didn't they come to us? If they were going to take it apart, if they were going to put it back together, we're the one with the expertise, we're the history, we would, our people are the ones that built it involve us. So I don't know if much attention is being uh, paid right now to attempting to get those people to uh, explain exactly what they would do and, and see whether this is uh, something which could be could be afforded, whether uh, and also the horses haven't been mutilated. A lot of people don't no, know they what they have not. Look like. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's one thing to restore it to what it was post 1984. But how about restoring it so that it looked like back in, uh, to, to the form it looked like in 1964 when they were first, when they were first um, presented to the world? I, I think that that's, I think that Stephen Weiss really deserves to have a piece of history completely restored and put back there. I don't know what the cost would be, but it's certainly something that's worth investigating. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think we got to uh, wrap it up and leave it there. Um, this has been a great discussion. We know we have work to do. And um, again, our next meeting uh, for preservation is on the, uh, May 13th and um, at 6.30. And so we hope to have some follow-up available there. Dan, you got a last quickie? 
Um, very briefly, I just wanted to say that um, there's a earlier this evening an effort was made to meet on the Metro Theater on 99th and Broadway, and there's a sort of new initiative uh, being driven by the residents. I know Deborah Rosenberg a couple of years ago uh, had spearheaded that, and I'm pleased to see uh, Landmarks West uh, uh, is on because we were also trying to connect with them. Uh, so this is sort of a, a renewed effort, perhaps now because of the current economic conditions, maybe there's a chance for uh, us to revisit this subject. We've actually been in touch with the owner, Mr. Bialik, and he has expressed interest in trying to collaborate. I think maybe he uh, perhaps has a slightly more realistic perspective on this. So uh, Council Member Mark Levine's representative was there, uh, and I, we're going to sort of reach out to Deborah Rosenberg about her efforts and try to come up with a more of a plan. I thought it would be appropriate to bring it before the board because of this committee's initiative. Um, and we'll be in touch as things develop. So Thank that's you. Please do. Thank yeah. You. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Yep. Hey, yeah. I'd say one thing. I think that. we have someone from the Manhattan yeah. Borough yeah. Board yeah. Office maybe wants to be, have the last word. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Hi, this is Rosalba Rodriguez. Yay. Yay. Hey. All office. right. Welcome. Um, thank you. And, and this has been a wonderful dialogue and we all learned a lot today. But I also want to bring to light, um, you have Amsterdam houses that um, someone mentioned the barrels. Thank you, Robert S. Beer, because it triggered my brain that Amsterdam houses has a set of barrels. So maybe that's something else that a CB7 could look at um, to see the historical value to it before anything gets done uh, without anyone knowing. So just wanted to put it out there and thank yeah. you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being there. Be careful about the barrels that NYCHA is going forward on. I promised the Amsterdam uh, Houses residents we would get them a playground and the tenants and the tenant association very excited about moving forward with that. Um, the barrels, which are actually concrete pipes, mm -hmm. um, are not uh, current uh, uh, Current wisdom about children's safety uh, does not allow the pipes to continue to be there. Um, I heard quite a few stories about kids losing teeth and smacking their head. So uh, I'm not sure there's any historic value. These were pipes that apparently were going to be used underground, but were left over and literally left there. Um, and then someone painted them and it became the barrels playground. Um, but, you know, if, if there's something there, you should, you know, coordinate with somebody because we're moving forward. All right. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, think it, I think we're ready to move forward, Kay. Yeah. I think we got it. Down here. <laughs> or else we'll be here till next week. Uh, Robert, you're you're out, baby. All right, you had your say. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can put yeah, it in the chat. Send us an email, <laughs> Robert. Can we please move on to our next. Discussion? We're gonna keep. We're gonna keep working. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, CB7 folks, and especially preservation committee members, we're gonna ask you to hang on this call to uh, to deal with one other item that Peter is gonna tell us about. Uh, everybody else, you're of course welcome always welcome you. at a CP7 <laughs> meeting. Uh, but uh, that's uh, thank you so that's much. That's it for you. our conversation. Thank you. All thank right. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for everyone else. Appreciate All right. it. Thank you. Thanks for thank having you. me. Thank you. All All right. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Babe Ruth got married at St. Gregory's Church right across the street from us, and the archdiocese broke my heart when they that's took right. They left us. Told them to okay. leave. Oh, a little bit of history. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you everybody. Everybody. Take care. Right. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for Thank having you, everybody. me again. All right. And I really hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Be well. Be well. Okay. All right. Okay. Wow. Thank you all. Um, Peter has a has a concern uh, that focuses on PS uh, one sixty six, and so uh, oh. I want to spend just a, a a quick minute um, or two or three or five uh, about that. Peter, can you? Yeah, um, this is uh, not just about uh, PS 166, but it's about everywhere on the west side uh, where they're um, doing construction on the exterior of buildings. Um, recently, I mean, uh, you, most of you have seen what's uh, termed um, construction debris netting. 
which is the netting that goes around a facade of a building as they work on it. Um, you've seen it everywhere on Broadway and other places. <clears throat> and um, while it's somewhat more recent, uh, there's technology that has developed where uh, you could get netting now, which number one could be in different colors, <clears throat> but more importantly, it could be so that it doesn't call attention to itself. Uh, I wanna show you a picture. I hope you could see this. Um, uh, I don't know if- You sent uh, it to everybody Peter, is this or one just of the to us? Did I send this? Yeah. Yeah, well, we can see it. Is right. it in the email? This is a building. Yeah, it was. This is a building on uh, Central Park West and um, uh, 92nd Street. Uh, and it's covered in, uh, in black, basically. When you come up close, it's not as bad. But when you walk a few blocks away, or one block away, it's, it's like a black shroud. And um, I um, uh, um, took attention to this because uh, many of you may not know but PS-166, um, which is right behind where uh, I live, it's on 89th Street between Amsterdam and Columbus. It, it's oh, a thanks. landmark building. Um, it was designed by the well-known famous architect, uh, C.B.J. Snyder, I believe. Um, it's a wonderful building and they plan on working on the outside. Um, and in, in a similar way, um, the Mah Manhattan School for Children, which is up on West 93rd Street, um, they've been working on that for the last five years and have another two years to go. And it's all covered in black. This photo, which you're looking at now, uh, is a building on, um, uh, Riverside Drive in the 90s that is being worked on on the outside and it's so much better because it's not black. Uh, you could see the facade through the netting. Um, it makes a, a good neighbor. The problem with all these buildings is they, they exist like that for many years. You know, this, we're not talking about um, Six months. a day, a week, or a month. We're mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. years. Um, and I would like for our committee or, or the board um, to influence um, the development of this netting everywhere, certainly in the historic districts where we should have some authority. Um, uh, uh, with respect to PS-166, uh, I'm in touch with the School Construction Authority. Um, the guy there has been very friendly, uh, and I would like to let him know that we don't want black uh, around PS-166 for the next two or three years. Um, if we didn't do anything, it would be probably covered in black. Uh, also, um, the principal of the school should take some interest. So this is an important issue. Um, it may not be the same as uh, a new building or a, uh, a changing uh, historic building, um, but it does very much involve what we should be doing. So uh, I would like this committee and I would like the board to take a position uh, on this issue. We should look through the LPC regs to see if this can kind of be squeezed into to something that that a, 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 a developer has to come to us and get LPC permission before they put up this netting or whoever is in charge of uh, the net, of approving this construction uh, netting. Yes. Well, we could start with PS-166 because um, the School Construction Authority 
uh, the, the, uh, the person who's handling that for the SCA, uh, I'm in touch with. Um, I'd like to be able to let him know with some authority um, what we would like, that we don't want black, you know, whether we choose a color or whether we ask them to cooperate. Uh, it's something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Susan. You have a question or a thought? Yeah, I'd like to say, Peter, I wish you had been around when um, I had to live behind that black netting for, uh, I think it was two and a half years. Um, from 2015 to 2000, um, almost 2018. It's really unpleasant to live behind it. And yeah. I would applaud this effort. Yeah. Up, up and for the that. kids in that school, uh, you know, it's gonna it's horrible. be a lot better. Uh, William, do you have a, Thank you. a thought as well? Yeah, I just, just had a question about the, the black netting. Um, just wondering if it offers more of a utilitary function rather than just a cosmetics. I think the white would look better too overall for the city or even maybe like a kind of neutral green if that's a thing. But I just wonder if the black is chosen just because it offers some type of protection from the sun for construction workers, which will reduce um, oh, good point. fatigue and uh, would promote more safety. So those are just some of the things I was thinking about if I was working. Well, let uh, me answer that um, good point. as quickly as possible. Um, they plan on working after school hours from four o'clock until 10 in the evening because this is a, a school that will be active. Uh, I spoke to the uh, super, uh, uh, the project uh, manager about it. Uh, so it has nothing to do with the sun. It just has to do with what they're able to get. And it's been commonplace for the last 20 or 30 years to have black as a color uh, for these uh, this kind of netting. Now they have other colors um, and as you saw in the building on, on um, um, uh, Riverside. Uh, Riverside Drive, um, it, it was perfectly acceptable. Yeah. All right. So uh, uh, Paige and Jay have questions or statements? Two things. First of all, um, Peter has a great idea. I live on the same street. And the mm -hmm. advantage, um, is William still here? Yes, hi. So um, as an architect, um, it's not the color that is important. It's the strength of the fiber that prevents tools from bouncing off the um, scaffold mm -hmm. lifts or the stairs to protect people below. So the thing is, it doesn't matter what color it comes in. Unfortunately, white is a little bit more expensive. We're talking here maybe 30, 40 cents, but if you're covering a whole building, it adds up. But the benefit of this is, Peter and I have been talking about this, the white netting, you can see silhouettes inside. You can't with the black. So if you're in a residential neighborhood, and as Peter said, they are choosing to work from what, 4 to 10 p.m. Wow. Um, and all weekend, that means they're going to be people up there while we're sleeping. And we've had terrible problems in the past of people jumping the wall, getting through the playground and getting into the backyards. So I, for one, think this is also a plus for safety. And when they light it up, instead of shining the light down the scaffolding pole, they can shine it on the work so that we're not blinded. It protects the workmen. It, it's a better environment for them. So um, there's that. Uh, uh, Michelle, as to your question, the yes. only thing that uh, the, the Landmarks Commission has nothing to do with site safety or anything. Well, the only does? thing that they do approve of is the new parasol um, scaffolding that you see on Madison yes. Avenue and some of the other things. They just need to know that they are using that because it's a taller scaffolding system than the, the knob and, and tube. But um, it's good that Landmarks stays out of that argument because following William's point of view, it's all about site safety for the workmen. And my hope is that with the, the white, I think Peter, it should be named Peter's um, Netting yes. um, uh, Act, um, because it will do an awful lot to help people not be afraid of walking around construction sites. Mm -hmm. So you can see in as well as see out. So Peter, kudos. Thanks mm -hmm. for 88 mm -hmm. speaking. 
and we could check with the DOB uh, and whoever else uh, gets they involved don't care. with that as well. They don't care. A I'm site sure safety is completely different than um, everything else. Oh. Hmm. I, I live in one of those buildings that's surrounded by this black netting. You could probably tell because, um, what do they say, the green in my gills? I mean, I have no more light in my apartment. Uh, Maybe white I, will help. Jay? Yeah, I mean, I agree 100% with Peter's concerns and Paige's concerns. And uh, I, I would just say as a matter of process that if we do a resolution, we should immediately get it to the people that are involved with PS 166 because you know, that's where you're likely to get something to happen. Mm -hmm. I would also include uh, a request to the city council to pass a requirement that the that the light colored uh, netting, but I would add that it's probably an exercise in futility because oh. there have been bills pending in the city council for years to deal with the scourge of sidewalk sheds that's infected the city uh, forever. And those bills which involve uh, limitations on utilization and the duration and the necessity have never even gotten out of committee. But I think we should include that request in our resolution, notwithstanding the fact that it's unlikely uh, to move our esteemed city council people. Right, uh, yeah. To do that's anything. a larger issue. Um, yeah, so uh, Peter, could you draft something for us to, uh, even if it's just for now in the form of a letter that we could, uh, make some sort of a, a semi-formal request? Well, maybe Paige and I will do it together. <laughs> Sounds good. If, if that's okay, Paige. <laughs> All right, Hi. I think that would be a good start anyway. I'm happy to, to work with you guys too in terms of the drafting, uh, as particularly of the request to the city council with regard. So if you guys wanna put something together and share it, I'm happy to comment on it if you think it's helpful. Okay. Thank you, Jim. You can count on that too. Beautiful. Wow. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I can right, only friends. say that I wish there was other writers of resolutions and other committees like this. With, oh, no. With we got the best. Uh, input. You can't have any of these. <laughs> Usually, people. like, uh, 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 you know, chirping in the background when we're trying to get another <laughs> committee. So I'm super impressed. Architects and lawyers, Stephen. I don't yeah. know. I, I know. I mean, uh, Ed, uh, we got to get you guys in other committees. <laughs> now, don't you nope. touch them? No. Nope. All right, friends. Uh, this has been really good, and um, we know we have some follow-up work to do on, on both of these uh, issues. Um, anything else before we? No, I. Th are we I'm okay? Ready to go home. I'm ready to go ready, home. Ready, ready to go home. <laughs> stay home wherever you are. <laughs> I'm ready to go to my friends. kitchen. Okay, the only thing I'd say is can you yeah. follow up on the last one? Just I think that she mentioned yes. she was going to come back, just sort of coordinate with her. Yes. I see we have a commitment that that's going to be done and, and you follow up and whether it's next month or the month after, but let's get them back to. to we'll follow. be delighted to yeah. do that. Yeah, Michelle and I will work on it. All right. That. Thanks, everybody. Right. Motion right. to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks All right. everybody. Thanks, everybody. On the board Good meeting. Here. Thank you. Bye -bye. Take care. Thanks, Peter.